shall determine the legitimacy of it. Member for Mr. Marathon. Mr. Mr. Speaker, the member has made some outrageous claims, speaking about a student being denied a scholarship because, no, no, you started off under the wrong premise, Mr. Speaker. The member speaking Mr. the Speaker, third person. Mr. Speaker, he said that the student was denied entry to medical school because of her socioeconomic background and because she did not have the proper name. I don't know what that means, Mr. Speaker. But let me set the record straight, Mr. Speaker, right now. When I became Minister of Education, every year, 40 students were allowed to medical school. 40. The year I became Minister of Education, I increased that to 70. The first year. That has been maintained at 70 to 73 since then. Now, the young lady in question, which the member is speaking about, and I am disappointed in him that he would take this tilt to make his point. Mr. Speaker, the young lady that the member is speaking about applied to medical school, for some reason, got a late acceptance, Mr. Speaker. The matter was then brought to my attention by the member. When I inquired, the member was a, a college of the Bahamas student. I want to make this other point, Mr. Speaker. Since I became Minister of Education, students who go to the College of the Bahamas and get accepted into UWI get first priority. First priority. That was not the case prior to me becoming Minister. That is a policy now within the Ministry of Education. A policy. It don't matter what your last name is. It don't matter where you're born. Well, it matters where you're born. You've got to be Bahamian. But it don't matter what part of the Bahamas you're born in, Mr. Speaker. If you go through the College of the Bahamas and you accept it into medical school, you are within that 70, first and foremost. Then we go to others, Mr. Speaker. So that's complete foolishness, rubbish. The member brought it to my attention. As soon as he brought it to my attention, Mr. Speaker, as soon as I inquired and found out the circumstances upon which it happened, it was through a late acceptance, and she didn't come in until late, Mr. Speaker. I then invited the committee to add her to the list, even though we had already reached the maximum, Mr. Speaker, to include her, to increase it by one, Mr. Speaker. I then communicated that to the member within two days, I think, and thanked him for bringing it to my attention. The member, the leader of the opposition, Mr. Speaker. To leave the opposition now, now, Mr. Speaker. Mem members, now, members, Mr. Speaker. Members, I members don't mind if he would have come in here and he would have thanked me for intervening. And I would, and I thanked him wow. for bringing to my attention, Mr. Speaker. I thanked him for that. But to come in here, Mr. Speaker, and say that she did not get it because of her name or she have no political ties, Mr. Speaker, is completely rubbish. Yes. You think of seventy for the last four years? That's two hundred and eighty students we put in. You think we know who Thank all you. of them are, Mr. Speaker? Uh, where they come right from? Right. Every student that has come through the College of the Bahamas, Mr. Speaker, has been given first preference, Mr. Speaker. Priority. Thank you. Priority, Mr. Speaker. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Members. it's unfortunate, mem Member. Uh, preempt me. Mr. Speaker, the point is, the point is, the point is, this young lady had not received a scholarship after being in, uh, accepted into medical school. I called the minister responsible, and the minister said, that is not fair, that is not right. He will look into it, because if this was the number one student, she should have been first in priority. The minister also said that he reserves additional amount of scholarship in the event something like this happened. And Mr. Speaker, I want to publicly thank the minister for that young lady. But Mr. Speaker, if the member, if the member had allowed me to finish, if he had allowed me to finish, he knew the story. But Mr. Speaker, the point is, that young lady who was initially denied after intervention by the minister, had received the scholarship. That young lady, Mr. Speaker, that young lady is the number one student 
in medical school today? Member. Number one student. Member. Member. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, a point of order. Member. I, I think, Mr. Speaker, based on what the member said prior. Members. As a prelude to his statement thanking me. I think, Mr. Speaker, I think, Mr. Speaker, he owes me, he owes this side, and he owes the persons who oversee the scholarship division an apology, Mr. Speaker. How can you come in this place and say that someone is denied a scholarship because they don't have the right name, Mr. Speaker? Or that they went to the College of the Bahamas or something else, Mr. Speaker? That is how he led into what he had to say, Mr. Speaker. And it is untrue, Mr. Speaker. Totally untrue. Totally. Mr. Speaker, and, and, and there's no need to go there, Mr. Speaker. There's no, he's quite aware of what happened, Mr. Speaker. Quite aware. Thank you, Honorable Member. Member, Member Fokalani. Thank you. I <coughs> and all Bahamians want to live in a society where names are totally immaterial. We want to live in a society built on meritocracy, where fairness is fairness. And your name, and from whence you come, and your financial background is totally irrelevant. If we are to grow our economy, no, Mr. Speaker. Member, member, member for Marathon, the, the chair is taking some concern now. I just want to make one last point, Mr. Speaker. I, 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 Mr. Speaker, I'd like to make one last point, Mr. Speaker. I made it clear to the member, Mr. Speaker, when he spoke to me that very first time, that it was a late acceptance. And as such, her name did not appear on the original list. I made this very clear to him. I then said, under the circumstances, I did not see where it was fair, first of all, because she was a good student, and secondly, because she graduated from the College of the Bahamas. And our policy was to ensure that every single student that graduates from the College of the Bahamas, who gets accepted into medical school at UWI, gets priority. I don't care what their last name is. I don't care what island they're from. We don't care about that, Mr. Speaker. And so. He came with this proposition, Mr. Speaker, to make it seem as if we have some favorites or we value one set of people over another, depending on what their political persuasion is or what their last name is, Mr. Speaker. It's utter foolishness and utter nonsense, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, and at the very least, Mr. Speaker, he should withdraw that statement because it's Me untrue. Member, if the, if, the, if, the, if the member for Kalani interprets it based on some other information as... We, we, that well, the, the member has every right to, to state that his his opinion. So we're not going to deal with that any further. Member for Kalani, you need to continue. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if we are to grow our economy, we must stamp out corruption, cronyism, which is endemic. This is a different topic, which is endemic in this PLP Christie administration. Week after week. We become aware of millions of dollars going missing from government agencies. And in most instances, culprits go scot-free. The habit of public money disappearing in private pockets must stop. It is the duty and responsibility of politicians of our generation to root out and stamp out high level of corruption in our society. And under the FNM administration, procedures and policies will be put in place to prevent the uncontrolled stealing of public funds. And those caught stealing will be brought to justice. Mr. Speaker, the myriad of scandals that are plagued the Christie-led administration has without doubt contributed to this PLP administration being described by many as the worst, the worst government in the history of the Bahamas. Scandal after scandal is all we hear about nowadays. Who can forget the Bamsi fire insurance? And who can justify that for 35 students at Bamsey, they built a cafeteria five to seven times the size 
of the cafeteria at College Bahamas. You hear negotiations with the Chinese for 10,000 acres of property in Andrus. And you, you, a Bahamian, can't get one acre for use of you and your family. There's constant talk in the community about the Alfred Gray magistrate scandal. Remember, remember, remember the Rubis. Remember the member for Michael. Uh, member for Michael, my apologies, Speaker. Member for Michael, magistrate scandal. The Rubis oil spill scandal. The urban renewal, small homes repair scandal. The missing money at post office, College of Bahamas, Customs Department, Road Traffic Department. And the list goes on and on. Mr. Speaker, for five consecutive years, this PLP government of hope and change has provided false hope to homeowners with their defaulted mortgages. The PLP promised mortgage relief, but in spite of their promises, home foreclosures and bank repossessions continue to escalate. Hmm. So Bahamians have taken due note that for the fifth year in a row, the PLP promises to bring mortgage relief. But it's too little, too late, because the Bahamian people have lost faith in your many failures. They, they the people want speak in the third to person. anxiously the people want to anxiously foreclose the people want to anxiously foreclose upon you the government. In fact, Mr. Speaker, the people of the Bahamas want me to let the Prime Minister know that they are anxiously awaiting the opportunity to foreclose on the PLP government and evict all of you from this honorable house. The FNM will unveil, unveil its own simple, workable, but common sense mortgage relief program, which will keep many homeowners in their homes despite the long, dark delay, and the many not now able to be saved, and for whom relief has forever been lost. Mr. Speaker, when the PLP assumed the mantle, the mantle of government in 2012, our unemployment rate stood at 14%. Four years later, the number has increased 14.8. The Department of Labor, in its latest survey, indicates. Brian Volo, should you recognize the member for Golden Gate? That is absolutely incorrect. Absolutely incorrect. And, and, I, and, I, and I tabled the statistics the last time I spoke in Parliament. That is absolutely incorrect. That information gave us done. I, I, I request that he withdraw it because he knows that it's incorrect. He said, he, he said uh, the unemployment rate was 14% at that time, and it's 14.8 now. That's incorrect. Absolutely incorrect. What is it now? Bring it. It's incorrect. What is it? I table it in Parliament. What is it? You know what it is. That's incorrect, Mr. Thank Speaker. You. I, I, Thank Mr. Speaker, you. I table it in Parliament. Thank you, Honorable Member. Speaker. Me member for. Member the for. The point is. The point is. It's higher. The point is, the it's, higher. The point is it's higher than when we assume. Members, 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 members. Speaker. Members. Member for, Kalani, member for Kalani, just, just pause for a moment. The, just a member just took issue with, with your, the accuracy of your numbers. And so for, for the purposes of accuracy, then I, the, the, the minister indicated that it's incorrect. And I, think I stand with the 14.8, and the member can bring information to prove that. But the point is, no. it's higher than when we, than when we were in office. And the speaker... I would hope the member, the statistics which normally comes out in May, we're now in June, I would hope the member would inform us at some point when the new statistics are coming out. Tell us what it is now. 
The Department of Labor, Mr. Spe Mr. Speaker, in its latest survey, indicate that there were over 31,000 persons unemployed and looking for work, while thousands have become tired, discouraged, and in such despair that they have lost hope and have stopped looking. When I want to remember for yeah. Golden Gates. When the, when the FNM um, left the um, government, it was 14.7%. And it's now 14.8. It's a 0.1% difference. <laughs> no, 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 no. The member said it was 14%. And it's now 14.8. It was not 14%. It was 14.7% and is now 14.8, which is 0.1%, which shows that in order for you to have that sort of stability, jobs had to be created. Absolutely. Because you have 5,000 kids coming out of school every year. And how could 5,000 kids be coming out of school and you not create jobs? Thank you, Honorable Member. Mr. Speaker, those, I'm, those who I'm, 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 glad, I'm glad the member has agreed that's 14.8. But what the member should recognize is that we were under a depression. <laughs> worst, worst recession ever seen. Worst. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can't hide from that. And in a, in a better economy, in a better economy, it's worse. Mr. Mem Speaker. Members. Members. Mr. Speaker. Members. 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 Member on the floor. Mr. Mr. Speaker. Labor relations, labor relations between the government and the labor union are so strained that a noted labor leader remarked the other day that relations were never this bad. And a union chief had commented that we may campaign against the PLP. Labor government. Mr. Speaker, it pains me. It pains me to know that over 43,000 Bahamians go to bed hungry because they are too poor to buy the nutritional food that they need. I know what it is to be poor, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> I have lived it. I have lived it from birth. During my childhood and student days, I know what it is to be poor. I am a product <coughs> of the poor and the face and post the boy of those living below the poverty line. And Mr. Speaker, with every fiber in my body and with the hope of the Almighty God, I am totally committed to doing all that I can. Whenever I can and with the help of whoever I can to remove this scourge of abject poverty from the face of our Bahama land. Mr. Speaker, I do not know if those on the PLP front bench are aware Members. or appreciate the amount of pain and suffering that abounds in our society. But every day, every day more and more of our people are suffering because this PLP government has done nothing right to improve their quality of life. Mr. Speaker, the Christie-led PLP government has failed and failed miserably in its most important responsibility to the Bahamian people, and that is to keep us safe. Keep us safe. Violent crimes and the fear of crime stalks our land. And the record-breaking murder count of 146 persons last year almost qualifies the Bahamas as an armed war zone. Mm. And already, we have recorded 56 murders. And on the way to meeting or surpassing Billboard. last year's record. Our economy, Mr. Speaker, will not <coughs> grow until we solve the issue of crime. And as you know, crime is a multifaceted issue. 
which requires multifaceted approaches. The family, the church, civil society, and the government must all join forces to combat this societal menace. Just the other day, Mr. Speaker, a young man was gunned down an ATM machine. Wow. We must, as hanging is on our books, we must hang these criminals. These murderous scumbags must be hung by the neck until dead. Mr. Speaker, we need peace on our streets. Will we create a safe Bahamas? Hang them up. We will create a safe Bahamas by collaborating with our social partners, the church, educators, social workers, and the citizens at large to implement new crime prevention program. A major problem in our society is that our children are growing up without knowing the difference between right and wrong. They live in a culture that glorifies violence, disrespects authority, and are concerned only about their rights, but not about their responsibilities. Our aim, Mr. Speaker, is not, it's not just to control behavior, but to change it by directing their energies into positive channels by instituting conflict resolution programs in community centers, fostering various kinds of cadet programs and troops such as dance, music, and other wholesome activities that promote personal, family, group, and national pride and build skills and leadership in our people. We will give them the opportunities to display their talents and to gain other forms of national recognition. We will develop, Mr. Speaker, a modern, efficient, crime-fighting machine, properly manned, trained, and equipped to prevent crime where possible, detect crime when it occurs, and bring those responsible to account before the courts of law. The murderous scumbags must be hung, as that is on our laws. Hang. 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 Hang, hang. hang hung, whatever. Pop the neck. <laughs> <laughs> we will bring, we will review the present policy of the PLP crime program, that is catch, retain, and release. And instead, we will work with community-based partners to identify potential problems and existing feuds and intervene before they occur and turn deadly. We will introduce neighborhood safety programs designed to change the culture of violence that is endemic in our poverty-stricken neighborhoods. And Ms. Speaker, I think the, the Minister of National Security uh, at some time pointed out that 60% of the murders occur within our inner city. We will eliminate habitats where criminals and criminal activities flourish. We will deploy intelligence officers throughout the inner city to prevent and proactively defuse criminal activities while at the same time gathering invo invaluable information to help us work to develop and implement a zero tolerance crime strategy. We will use state-of-the-art technology in our fight against crime including new gunshot detection devices, the innovative social media exploitation technologies, drones and other crime-fighting devices in the detection 
and surveillance of hotspots targeted high crime areas. We will build we will build a modern prison. The emphasis will be on rehabilitation and skills training rather than just a place for warehousing of criminals. Mr. Speaker, I wish to commend our brave men and women of the Royal Bahamas Police and Defense Forces who every day put themselves in arms way to keep us and our communities safe and assure them that the FNM, once given the opportunity, will support and provide them with resources necessary to help rid this menace from our society. And Ms. Speaker, I'm ha I was very happy to listen to the Minister of National Security's report about the events that occur on the high seas with our Defense Force vessels and Dominican. I was happy that none of our Defense Force officers were hurt or killed. However, Mr. Speaker, I'm informed that the message within the Dominican Republic society is that the Bahamian Defense Force is a joke and we can enter their borders and fish any time and they, this is what I'm told, and we, there's no major recourse. Mr. Speaker, that's a matter that must be dealt with. Mr. Speaker, we need a more educated society with the skills necessary to live in and contribute to today's technological world. Our public school system <coughs> continues to graduate far too many students with a degrade average and no visible plan to change this disheartening statistics. We have to stop social promotion. If a child cannot read or write, sending him or her forward to a higher class only breeds anger and frustration. We have to stop this notion that every child should go into a purely academic stream. No child, Mr. Speaker, should leave grade two without knowing how to read and write basic arithmetic. The public education system must provide programs to ensure that every child emerges from grade 12 with a marketable skill. The FNM will initiate properly staffed, active community centers where enterprise, music, art, and various marketable skills are provided to our young and not so young citizens. Mr. Speaker, it is unfair that due to lack of finances, students in our family islands do not have the same access to education at the College of Bahamas as students from New Providence in Grand Bahama. Um, so we will provide full scholarship and housing to all family island students once qualified and attending College of Bahamas in addition to free accommodation, Mr. Speaker, we would ensure that those students receive a stipend. We wish to place on record the Free National Movement's total commitment to providing every Bohemian with easy, affordable, and timely access to quality health care. Essential to the realization of this goal, however, is the promotion of healthy lifestyles and the expansion <coughs> of preventive health care. We believe, however, that in order to provide the greatest good to the greatest number of our people, that care must be taken as to how the program is implemented. On the march to comprehensive health insurance, 
The Free National Movement constructed many hospitals in the islands of Abaco and Exodus.